wants to cancel the examination. Oh, okay. But what was Drona saying? Drona said, don't be so upset. Why do you want to cancel? If you don't take, if you don't pass the examination, that's okay. I will teach you more. But you have to learn. You are the heir to the throne. You will be the next king of the of the of the Astanon. If you can't help yourself, if you are if you are ignorant, the world will be ruined. Astana will be ruined. I could tell that Doriadana was angry. He talked like this. He said, Drona, my teacher, don't you remember what you were like before you came here? You were poor. I have given you everything. I have given you money. I have given you a house. I have given you a palace. You have to do what I say. If I want to cancel the examination, you cancel the examination. You have to, and if you don't want to, get out of here. Leave. Go away. And Drona replied, you should follow the example of the Pandua. The Pandua are interested in learning, it, and, and you should be wise like them. They just, I don't, and, and Duryodhana said, why should I study their example? They just want to get lots of money so they can be have money like me, and I have lots of money already. And Drona said, stop talking like that, because if you do not manage your money well, if you just put it in a mattress and sleep on it, you will someday l lose all of your money. Doriadana said, why should I complete my education? I don't have to write a thesis. I can just copy somebody else's thesis and hand it in his mind. That way I'll get my degree and I'll become even richer. And Drona was very sorry to hear this. He said, Doriadana, that is plagiarism. Your thesis must be your original work. You will be caught. Your degree will be taken away. You will lose your honor. And Doriadana said to Drona, the only good thing about my education here is that we have lots of money for games. That is where the money should be spent, for games. Cut the budget everywhere else, but keep my games. <laughs> and chastised him. He said, no, Doriadana. Education is important. Teaching is important. Learning is important. That is where the money should be spent, not for games. You can't take the money away from teaching and learning. Mr. Sangut, did you hear that before the examination, Sakuni, the king's assistant, changed the Pandua weapons? He replaced them with bad material. Sakuni replaced the weapons? Yes! That way the Koroa will, will win to have stronger weapons than the Pandua, and the Koroa will be sure to win the examination. That isn't right. They shouldn't do that. Oh, but anyway, look, the examination is about to get started. The soldiers are cheering. Let's go watch. Woo! Kito Pinnacle Saxi. Okay, boss, I'll be the umpire and we'll get started. And so, first up, it will be Nakula for the Pandua versus Dorsasana for the Korowa. Let the fighting begin. Pandua 1, Korowa 0, 
So in round two, it will be Sadewa for the Pandua versus Bagadewa for the Korowa. Bagadato, Sadewu, Yatno, Yatno. talk without my mouth moving. <laughs> two and Korowa nil. For round three, it will be Arjuna versus Yu Yu Tsu. Yu Yu Tsu, Arjunu, Yu Yu Tsu, Arjunu, Yatno, Yatno. Because the Korowa had those stronger weapons, the Pandua had the weaker weapons. But they won anyway. They won because they are because they are disciplined, because they want to learn. This shows us what Residrona has taught us about the importance of education. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> yes, that is all. Because this is all the time our American Dalang had in Bali. This is all he was able to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope he can go back to Bali sometime soon and learn more. Yes, I hope so. Maybe he could learn all of the Mahabharata and perform the entire Mahabharata and maybe the Ramayana too. Well, that would be fun, but I think it would take about several months to perform all of that. Maybe he can just learn a little bit more. Okay, well that's fine. All right, that's all. This is at the end. You can go now. Goodbye.
Thank you very much, and thank you for a wonderful. Handing me these, uh, handing me the puppets and getting me things uh, smoothly and easily, and and uh, and I apologize to all of you, and I apologize to my teacher Pak Tun Jung for all of the mistakes that I made. <laughs> so we have time for questions, discussion. Uh, what would you like to know? Yes. In Bali, how? How often are performances like this given every day or just on holidays, festivals? Uh, it all depends. Um, it, it, they can really be done quite often. Um, but they, so, and they tend to be performed more often at certain times of the year when festivals are happening. Uh, but it depends. They're very expensive to produce. And so, it, and so the family or town has to save up a lot of money for this. Uh, and. Um, so, in answer to the question, you know, at any given time, there will be, so any given town might do one only, you know, a few times a year. But if you're, when I, whenever I've been there and been traveling around on any given night, within an hour's drive, we can find two or three performances going on. So they're happening quite often. Yeah. It's interesting that when you look at the shadows, you can't see how puppets are there, but they're so elegantly decorated. Right. So what's the explanation for that? I mean, because it's not, because they're not for you. <laughs> <laughs> because it, I mean, it, I mean, it, uh, it's for the gods. The gods can see the puppets. Okay. Um, the gods can see how beautiful okay. they are. Okay, so they're uh, decorated for the gods. That's right, that's right. Now in Java, the audience will watch from the shadow side. And so they will see the puppets because they want to see the puppets. They want to see the beauty of the puppets. Um, but in Bali, uh, very few of the audience sees, sees the puppets. And, and, and it is much more uh, specifically religious and devotional in Bali than it is in Java. But the philosophy is still the same. It's just the people have chosen to sit on the other side. In Java. In Java. Um, yes, it's, not, it, it's more complex in Java because it's predominantly Islamic. And so. Um, they, these are plays about Hindu gods, um, and I think what that shows us is that um, is that Islam, as practiced in in Java, and I'm by no means any expert on this, is much more of a syncretic religion than people in America might understand. There are many different forms of, of Islam, and that this is a form of Islam that has no problem uh, incorporating. Um, the, the Hindu gods, Hindu stories, and so forth. And there is still clearly a devotional aspect to it. There is a spiritual aspect to it. It is not as explicitly about the practice of their religion the way it is in, in, in Bali. Um, but still, uh, it's, it's, for, it, it's serving a devotional function. There is also a form of, of Wayang in Java that is specifically about telling Islamic stories and about teaching Islam. Yes? I got a couple questions. Um, how long does it take for the puppets to be constructed? And is there a certain type of material, like a certain type of animal they use? Because yeah. I know you said they're made out of leather. Yeah, it's cowhide that is used. Um, and I don't know exactly. I know it is a very long, it's a process of, 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 cut, of curing it, of flattening it, curing it, scraping it. Um, uh, and and then and then the, the cutting and um, and I don't know exactly. My teacher uh, told me that these were puppets he was making for me while I was there, and then gave me these puppets. They appeared awfully fast. Mm -hmm. um, I would not doubt my teacher. But, so so I don't so. Um, it's a, it is a very long and laborious process. I, I don't know exactly. I, I guess the other question I had yeah. too was um, like the dyes and the colors that are used. Yeah. Is that all native things to that area, or are they getting traditionally? Other yes, but now they often yes are using much more. Um, so, for example, in Western Java, um, the area around the Sundanese region around Bandung, there's a famous puppeteer who has a television show named Asep. Um, and he uses automobile paint on his puppets um, because it's very bright, it's very glossy, uh, and he likes that, that very sharp effect. 
So, you know, one of it, it's a there's a fascinating whole issue about issues of tradition and colonialism and going on that is part of this too. Because I think in the West we often have this idea that we want to preserve. It's important to keep the tradition. It's important to preserve the tradition. The tradition is important to us. And there certainly are people in Bali and Java who believe in this importance of the tradition. But there are many other people who believe that it's absolutely essential to keep updating it and keep changing it. Uh, and if you look at the tradition, actually, the question of the tradition is very questionable and very problematic. And to a large extent, the tradition was invented by the Dutch colonialists. Um, and so, if that, it, it, so the issue of tradition is, 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 is problematic and, and hard. To, so what is native, what is traditional, and so forth. But in a way, Asep kind of, I felt, gave me permission for doing the course the way I do it and teach how I do it. Because he's, he's very controversial with his television show and the kind of updating that he does. And when I interviewed him, uh, he said to me, what I do in Java is Javanese, is Sundanese, why I'm going. What you need to do is go to America and make American uh, why I'm. And so I felt in that way that many of the kind of innovations and changes we're making here, I feel I have Gossap's blessing in doing so. If not always my teacher, Pop Dunjum, is much more conservative. Yeah? Uh, does your teacher or do other Dalongs, do they do this as like a career or is it more like a hobby? Um, it's his career. Okay. Uh, yes, that, this is what he does. Um, uh, though there are many Dalongs then who perform do in for tourists, do tourist shows. And he's very critical of that because he feels that you lose your talent, you're debasing yourself, uh, and that you just become a kind of showman and losing the spiritual aspect of it. Um, but so, uh, and and then some people are fantastic, are fantastically wealthy, like Cheng Long, like us. Yeah. What makes one a good Long? How do you uh, know that? Yeah. Um, they, uh, you, um, reputation is one thing. But then also it has to do with, um, so the, 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 the dance of the Kayonin. So uh, someone who is a, is a devotee of this, they're going to be able to see the dance of the Kayonin immediately and determine how good you are based on the motions that you okay. are doing that. And this was some, that dance was something we spent hours and weeks studying. Because he would say to me, someone watching your performance will recognize that you are a good Balinese Dalai because of the, the exact goals of this. And it was fascinating as a student of his to do this because you know, so much of the teaching we do, especially in the humanities, has to do with what your opinion is and what my opinion is. And it's all relative, and we can discuss it, and nothing is right, and nothing is wrong, and so on and so forth. His teaching is, here is the way to do it. <laughs> and the way to do it is the way that will please the gods. And this is step one, and we are not moving on to step two until you get step one right. So I spent hours on that dance of the Kayonan, and we spent hours practicing that. And then he'd, I'd, he'd say, okay, go back to your hotel and practice it. And I'd go back and practice it, and I would come in the next day, and he said, did you practice? And I would say, yes. And he said, did your wrist hurt? And I'd say, no. And he would say, then you didn't practice it. <laughs> um, so, so it really is a matter of watching those fine points, which an which a, the devotee of it will be able to tell. And someone who not a devotee, if that's implying that some elite, a person who goes a lot will be able to tell right by that whether you're um, good or not. Yeah. When we're talking about the gods, are there elements of indigenous religions? Yes, yes, and that so, goes back to the, the animist quality of it. Right. So in a sense, the gods are very um, are very local. Uh, so for example, a quick story on that. Um, my friend Sami that I was mentioning before, the one whose temple I was pointing at, um, when we visited her last time, uh, Sadana was still in, in London where he was teaching. He got held up because of the volcano in Iceland, if you remember. Um, and, uh, and she explained that whenever he travels out of Bali, she gets snakes into her house. And the reason the snakes get into the house is because they live in Denpasar, but she is not from Denpasar. She's from another village. And so the rituals that she knows and the rituals that she does are for the gods and spirits of her village. And she doesn't know the right rituals for Denpasar. And 
because she is not performing the right rituals, and because Sadhana is not there to perform the right rituals, snakes get in the house. Uh, and what she has to do is she goes to the king and invites the king in, and the king comes in and does the right rituals, and then there aren't snakes anymore. Yeah, so the gods are very local, and there very much is a kind of, and the whole, again, the question of Hinduism in Bali is very complex, and that's a whole other subject, but it's, there's a lot of scholarship to suggest that Hinduism is really a kind of mid, as practiced in Bali now, is a kind of mid 20th century uh, construction, and that it is much more based on uh, um, pre-Hindu uh, um, local gods uh, and, and local traditions. Yeah. So, but you might have said this, but I might, but I, if you did, I missed it. Do these shows travel around to the people, or do the people go to a particular place? They'll to go see to the, the temple. They'll go to the temple okay. to see it. But the temple in their village. So the Dalong will go to a uh, village. But now, the Dalong travels around. Yes. Previous, previously, the tradition has it that every village would have their own Dalong. He would not be a professional Dalong, um, but would be a villager who would do this. Uh, and, uh, and now local Dalongs are, because people are more able to travel more, now it's become more professionalized and they want someone who's more of a professional doing it. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, where, uh, I mean, about the script that you, you tell the story, yes. but, uh, Generally, does Dalang make made up the story or write like the script by itself? And where is the source of getting those traditional type of stories? Yeah, good question. The stories come from um, uh, either the Mahabharata or the Ramayana, typically. Um, and then there are what's referred to as either branch story, trunk stories or branch stories. Trunk stories are stories that come straight out of the text. So we take this part out of the text and we perform it. Branch stories are ones which branch off from that, which use the characters, but are f they freely make up stories that that you would never find in those epics. Uh, and yes, so the part the Dalong has to, on the one hand, respect the tradition, know the tradition, memorize the Kawi, perform the Kawi, do it the right way. But also, it's very important for a Dalong to be creative and to make things up. Um, him or her or herself. So there is, and also the clowns do not appear in the epics at all. The clowns are purely are, are purely indigenous. These are clowns from Bali and Java, and the clowns in in the Sundanese region of, of Java are completely different from the Javanese areas of Java, and completely different from the Balinese clowns. So it seems as though it's quite possible that they come from an even more ancient tradition. That is that. Then, when these Sanskrit epics are coming, are combined into that. Yeah. Is the uh, traveling Dalong who goes from temple to temple? Does he bring the gamelan with him, or does he pick up local cats? As um, they in them? some cases, uh, a Dalong will have musicians that he always works with. So, in the case of Cheng Long, he's very rich. He right. has his musicians and his ba his backup band that always travels with him. In other cases, you'll get whoever is available. So it might be there's more in the sense of a pool of people. Okay. Yes. Um, I had a question about the humor. Is yes. that uh, because for it to be um, relatable, it also needs to be contemporary in some ways, yes. like like the yes. humor that you have, and yeah. is that also true of um, a traditional puppet show? Yes. The the humor is very is very topical. It'll have to do with political issues right now. It'll have to do with village issues. One of the things that Dalong will do is arrive early in the day and walk around the village and say, what's going on here? Um, what are the issues here? When my friend Sedano is here, if any of you have been here long enough and you remember Vision, Ohio, um, <laughs> uh, he found he knew it. So he incorporated Vision, Ohio into his performance of that. Um, typically, what I would do when I was there is I would arrive early for a performance. I would go and meet the Dalong. And I would notice they would always want to get my name. And they would always want my name in writing. And so then in the, one of the clown scenes, they would always make, the clowns would make jokes about this American professor who was here <laughs> at the performance. In fact, at one performance, they sent a microphone out into the audience, and one of the clowns interviewed me um, <laughs> uh, from the stage. Um, so indeed, incorporating into contemporary issues. But it is, 
uh, and that's where a lot of correction happens as well, kind of commenting. So, and, and, uh, so I would talk to my teacher a lot about the jokes I would use and is this acceptable, how is this acceptable. For example, there's an obvious reference in there to sports at Ohio University. <laughs> and I had a long talk with my teacher about how to incorporate that. Uh, and, and as he and I discussed, it was clear that if I were to, so suppose, um, suppose uh, President McDavis, <laughs> okay, suppose President McDavis were here, um, and I were to explicitly say, um, I think we are spending too much money on the football team, too much money on sports at Ohio University, that would be insulting to him. Um, and that would be, that, and that would not be a proper thing. However, couching it in a different context where the message is clear, but it's couched in a different context is an acceptable thing to do.